You say something about my hair? Let's let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No 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 no. Yo, it's time. It's finally here. It ain't no April Fools. Ain't none of that stuff, my people. It is time for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Four. Diamond is unbreakable, or you can think of the really bad mistranslation word, Diamond is not crash. Like, now, episode one, I've been waiting for this for a very long while. Now, just to say something about this right now, is that I actually have, like, I've read all the manga before, I know everything that's going to happen in the story, I've read part three, I've read part four, and just to let people know, this is my favorite part of JoJo that I've seen. I've only seen a bit of part five, but it's like, I, this is so far my favorite one that I've seen. I absolutely love this, and Josuke is the coolest motherfucker in this series, and I love it so much. It's really badass. Now, I want to get some things before we actually talk about the story itself in there, which was a lot of controversy coming into it, was the change of art style. From now, a lot, a lot of people like the manliness of like part one, two, and three, and four, especially the start of part four kind of had the same vibe, and I'm more the stickler of the manly Joe Scare when he's saying, ah, you're talking about my hair. I thought they'd bring back the kind of the whole muscly, like, making him look like Kenshiro look. But they're going for more, not exactly like flamboyant as, like, the manga was, but they're kind of going for a mixture of the boat. And it is really nice. It really does, like, it's really colorful. It's really nice. I do wish it was the old style, but that's the one thing. So, like, a lot of people are kind of complaining about the art style. I can kind of see what they're kind of coming from. Especially, I was a little bit weirded out when I was during part four, seeing the start of it and then the art style completely changing but every art style that you know like Araki has done they always constantly change from the start to like near the late to the end of it so here we're gonna go we're gonna talk about part four diamond is unbreakable and the first minute of this show if you've read the manga if you know anything even if you don't know is the strongest start like it's one of the strongest starts to a season. You see some lovely like lady's hand making some dinner, making some eggs, making some bacons, and then you get to see that all the time it was some motherfucker using the cut off hand of the bitch to make his breakfast and I'm like, oh my god, that is sick. That is so twisted. I mean, definitely that person definitely did kill the queen of that kitchen. Oh my god, that was such a terrible fucking joke. Oh my god, oh Jojo, part 4 fans will know what the fuck that meant. Oh dear god. Now, coming up, it is 1999, and Jotaro is 28 at this time. So there's been a very huge time skip from what we've seen from part 3. And he's actually looking for our main character of this series, Josuke. Now, Josuke, from what we get to see, he's currently a... Uh, around about the same age as Jotaro was during part 3. You know, he's kind of like started his first day of high school and he happened to get in a bit of mix with a couple of people that didn't seem to like him too much. They were like, yo, get the fuck away from him. What are you doing? You know, trying to act like you're all gangsters and shit. Trying to think like you're all this and all that, like with the pumped up hair and everything. He's like, and he was just like shitting himself. He's like, yo, man, like, don't worry about that. I'm just scared about this turtle behind me. He's like, yo, get away from that shit. Like, I don't, I don't handle with reptiles. These pieces of shit from what we've seen of them, it's like, yo, they throw the fucking turtle out, and it's like, the little character that we met earlier, Kochi, like, he was the one that actually directed, like, Jotaro to, like, oh, the, the, you know, you get, like, to, like, jo Josuke's place around there, like, I know his address, it's like, you go from there, and he sees that turtle, he's like, yo, that's fucked up, what are they doing like that, and, like, even though Jotaro's like, man, you know what's even more disgusting, that man didn't do anything to save that turtle, he only cared about just, like, getting away from him, and it was like, he was fine with them letting him have his money. He was fine with like letting him have like you know save his clothes or anything. But when you talk about the hairdo, <laughs> that's where everything kicks off. And that line like, yo, you say something about my hair like that. You say something about my hair, you piece of shit. And that's where it kicks off as we get to see Josuke's stand. Now I kind of do like they kind of do explain it through a little bit for people that haven't seen you know part one to three. They explain what kind of like, Stands are as a kind of like refresh, or it's a, uh, people that kind of forgot about what exactly stands are. That's nice. So, in a way, I wouldn't recommend you watch this without having at least some knowledge on JoJo, or even like, because like from how it is, is like definitely like you get more of an attachment. You'll definitely feel like a lot more great about the series if you personally, you know, you you know about Jotaro, you know what he's gone through, you know about like Joseph Joestar and all of them, because that Joseph Joestar and Jotaro play a huge role in this, and we get revealed here. The main reason why we're after this guy right now, why he's after Josuke, because Josuke is the bastard child of Joseph, 
Joestar when he was 62. That man, that old devil, he cheated on Suzy Q and he had this with another woman. It was like, yo, that is fucked up and he's the heir to the actual, like, the whole inheritance of, like, jo like everything that Joseph Joestar's had since he's, like, big real estate engine, like, tycoon and it's like... Honestly, like, the whole mission thing, like, yo, Joseph cheated on Suzy Q, like, that's, it's, even still, like, I've heard fr a friend of mine talking about, like, I'm not too sure how I feel about that, with, like, Joseph cheating on her, and I, I was like, I don't, like, yo, I'm not gonna lie, though, his mom's pretty hot, though, oh my god, like, jo like, Josuke's mom is pretty hot, she is milfy material, I'm gonna have to say that, but it's like, I do kind of feel shitty for, like, what happened to Suzy Q because of that situation, but even so, I definitely do like, see, like that's a very interesting twist about, but Josuke's like, you know, just like, I don't care about the inheritance and all that, but well, we've been fine on our own, just, you know, leave us alone, I appreciate it though, and it's like, you know, that's not the only thing that Jotaro's here for, there's some mysteries going afoot with like an escape prisoner, which he was like, yo, when he was 12, he fucking raped and killed people, he did some fucked up shit to children, it was like, this guy's a fucking monster, and you seeing that, you know, from what we can understand so far, from what the little bit that we saw of him, that he's able to, like, his stand is actually able to take over people, and it was like, yo, that's some fucking twisted shit. And what Josuke done, because we've seen a little bit of what his powers are with his stand, is that he's actually able to, like, revert, like, kind of heal, slash, kind of, like, return things to what they were. So he, there was a bit where there was, like, a giant kind of, like, robbery going on. He punched right through it, like, a, the chick, the hostage, and also them. She healed the hostage, but then as well, the knife that the guy had as well, that he took as well, he put that back into his stomach, and I'm like, oh my god, that's so, like, like, like. see, this is what I really like about jo uh, Josuke, like, obviously, since, like, it's not the full explanation of the powers are going to, like, be on there, so I don't want to describe too much about the stand, uh, about much of it, nor do I want to say about the name, because, you know, that'll come around, uh, but... Definitely, from what I like about, like, why this one's a lot more interesting than, like, kind of Jotaro's one, is because, like, Jotaro's one is just kind of, like, you know, the big punchy stand, and then also you get it later on about the whole time sort of situation to it. But with this one, you can just, there's so much, implant, like, you can imply into it, and it's just, like, it's really good. I love the stand so much. And, honestly, it definitely let up some great setup with, like, you know, that guy started going up to, like, you know, like, Josuke's mom's house at the end. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if I am going to be reviewing all of this. I definitely do want to at least try about there. I know that, like, apparently hearing about 39 episodes since it's supposed to be in, which is a little bit weird, actually, that it is going to be 39 episodes, because this is longer than actual Starless Crusaders, believe it or not. It's about, like, 20, 30 chapters, I believe, longer than, like, Starless Crusaders. I think, like, Starless Crusaders is about, like, 150-odd. I think it's, like, 150 mid uh, point, and this is about 170-odd, like, uh, 180. I'm not too sure about it. It's been a while since I've read it. But I am looking forward to it. We didn't get to hear the opening, so a lot more of that trolling about the opening is going to have to wait and all that. But other than that, I loved it. I, I, there's nothing to me, uh, me else to say apart from I fucking loved it. Like, it's everything I've wanted to see. Ever since part one, when they had the adverts of Josuke, you know, Koji there, like that. It's like, you know, that was like that. Oh my, like, all, all that stuff was really great like that. Like, I loved that. But it's like finally getting to see it animated, and I'm, I'm wait. All I'm saying for the rest of the show, I'm waiting for the hand. I'm waiting for the hand. That's all I want. I'm waiting for that stand because if people know that fucker is a badass like that, and I'm not no, I'm not talking about the hand that was on that dining table. But it's like that was such a strong intro. That was such a strong intro. And I'm really curious, like, you know, see how it's going to go, like, if the animation is going to, like, keep us apart. Obviously, we know the censorship's back, because we get to see that, especially with, like, uh, what we saw with that hat. There was a little bit of censorship, on, obviously, on the tip there, of, like, uh, the wrist and stuff. And obviously, like, Animal Cruelty's back, so, yeah, like, Araki still got out for those animals, especially that poor little turtle. But at least, you know, he got, he got out of it okay, he got healed, but it's like... It's definitely, I love it. I, I just love it. It's so goddamn good. And, like, there's just so much I want to say to you guys. But I know you, some of you have just been waiting for the anime and then going to read the manga. At this point, I probably am, probably can't wait anymore. I probably am going to, like, try and finish off part five and go into six and seven and then, you know, into today. So, honestly, I loved it. Like, it's everything I wanted to see from JoJo. It's everything I wanted from the first episode. And that just, the intro is just so fucking strong, because it's like, ah, oh, it's just so good. But it's like, I, I could give it a 10. Like, honestly, in my opinion, I feel like if not getting the fanboy out of me with it, I think it's a very good setup episode. I feel for people that, you know, don't know anything about JoJo, it's a kind of way to start off. You're going to be super confused, though, without knowing anything about the other parts about it. 
but I think it did a good way to attempt trying to get new fans into it, even though we're already, this is already the fourth part into it, and this is the, like, uh, like even this is the Ira this is Iraqi's favorite part of the series as well, like, he's always said that he loved part four, and that, hence why the guy from part eight is named the same, like, but it's definitely, this is a lovable part, it's got some really great twists and turns, and I just want to say more about it, but I can't, but it's like, even still, I think it's good, sir. Art style, I know a lot of people are going to be mixed about that. His characters so far, you've seen that, Josuke, obviously, he keeps up the badass sort of role they got, but then he also has his own little twist to it. And just overall, like, it's just really good damn enjoyable. It's like, to see that it's all going to be taking place in this little town, like, we're full of mysteries and turns and stuff, like, I can't wait, because that's the thing, this one's more of a mystery than just going around the world, like, part freestyle, but... On that, I loved it. For me, it's a 10. I just generally just a join a ball it was just saying this. Like, so let me know what you think in down below what you think about this part four. Are you excited is it as much as I am? As you've read the manga, what do you think of uh, what's gonna be happening? Do you think they're gonna animate that material perfectly? And for people that are just anime only watches, let me know what you think so far of the start of it. That's all for me, so I'm right then. If you love JoJo Part 4 as much as I do, you hit that like, you hit that subscribe, you hit all that juicy stuff because we love JoJo over here, especially part four. That's all for me, so I'll catch you guys and you JoJo fans next time. <laughs>